is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the November 18th, otherwise known as the Thirsty Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A mixed bag out here. Dow's off 51, S&P's up 13, NASDAQ's up 141, uh, Russell's down 14. Semis are up 50, trannies are back 150. Yeah, we got a little bit of everything to take a look at. Gold is off $7, silver down 21 cents. Lights we crude up 75, pennies she's trading at 78.30. Natural gas up six cents, that's trading at 487. Leading the charge dollar-wise to the upside, Amazon. One hundred nineteen dollars for about three and four tenths percent. Google's up thirty nine, one and three tenths percent. Uh, Nvidia is up twenty five bucks, eight and a half percent. Shopify seventeen bucks, one percent. ASML Holdings up seventeen bucks or two percent. We'll go try to figure out what all that means out there. Uh, micro uh, to the downside, we've got Mercado Libre. I believe that is day number two, leading the charge. The downside off forty five bucks, three percent. Micro Strategy thirty two bucks, four percent. Rivian Automotive twenty two bucks, fifteen percent. Coinbase down seventeen percent. I'm sorry, seventeen bucks, about five percent. And uh, Alibaba off about 17 bucks, a little over 10% to the uh, downside. So where do we want to begin? Let's just go take a look at what's going on with the uh, general markets. We'll begin by take a look at the equity future contracts out here. So the ES Mini has been attempting to form a new profile really since last night at 6 o'clock. It has changed uh, its form uh, several times. It may change again. But right now, we do know where the buyers and sellers are hanging out. Sellers are hanging out at 4,709, and buyers are hanging out at 4,633. We'll have confirmation of that tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow morning, I will be recording the show from 8 to 9. We'll be, be replaying it in the normal 1 to 2 o'clock slot. So please join us then. And, uh, of course, if you have some questions, uh, you know, send them off early in the uh, morning. If you send them off now, it just gets too cluttered with, with stuff out there. But I would love to hear from you today, of course. But do uh, please join us tomorrow between 8 and uh, 9. So back to the ES Mini out here. The ES Mini still has its TD9 count top. That TD9 count threshold level, the top of that pattern is going to be the trading day of November 5th, and that's at 47.1175. That is what price must close above to negate its signal. Otherwise, what we just have is really price consolidating with inside its TAS daily profile levels. The NQ does not have a new profile. The NQ is trying to take out its TD9 count pattern. That would require a close above 16,44850. We're trading at 16,451 right now. So close above 16,448 negates the topping signal. I'm not going to say it's going to make this big, huge A to B equal CD pattern that we could draw in there. It could, but that's not what Stevie's going to say. Uh, because what I do know is that price also is moving higher, like the ES Mini, believe it or not, with less relative energy. We'll take a look at that. We look at my other white background charts. In the case of the Dow, Dow Equity Future contract has been pushing down, been pushing down hard. 
on the bottom of its bullish structured daily profile. It doesn't matter what it did intraday. That's just the screaming memes. It depends upon where it closes. And as long as the Dow closes above 35,759, the Dow equity future contract, that is, then it will retain its bullishness, so to speak. It has a TD9 count top. Price is consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. Um, inside the Russell 2000, it also pushed lower. It is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. But the interesting thing about the pattern inside the Russell 2000, and those of you that are consolidation aficionados, that basically is each of you out there, you have probably noticed that when the Russell 2000 broke out of its consolidation pattern, price never really came back to test the top of that consolidation. But that's what it's doing today. And if this level holds, and now you're going to say, what's this level? I would say it is approximately uh, 2341, right around there, 2342. As long as that level holds, um, the consolidation, well, what's the consolidation, steve that you're talking about? Now, that's a good point. I really should show those. Here are the consolidation patterns. Now, the blue lines on this chart are the bottom of the daily profile levels out there. That would be a close below. That would be your first indication of a potential change in trend out here. So the ES Mini, you're seeing the new, well, actually, I need to get rid of that because that's the, uh, the let me update it, uh, because I know that it has changed out here, at least the new one that's trying to form. But in any event, so what we have, what has taken place thus far, when the ES Mini broke through this consolidation, price pulled back and tested the top of that consolidation. It did that on October 27th. So that pattern is complete. The Russell 2000 never really did. So that's taking place today. The Dow Equity Future contract did as well. It broke out above the consolidation back on the trading day of October 20th. And then it tested and rejected that consolidation level October 27th and October the 28th. The NQ hasn't done that. And it doesn't look like it does not look to me like the NQ will do that. Instead, the NQ and each of these, quite frankly, want to go target their consolidation measured move levels. The NQ, pretty certain at this stage that it wants to go tackle that 16928 area. Folks, don't don't it's just a projected level. It's around that area. A breakout of a consolidation is a measured move equal to or greater than a consolidation. So the NQ looks like it's a, almost a foregone conclusion. Of course, we need to see what the end of the day session looks like. It still has topping signals that it has that it has to take out. Uh, the AES Mini, you know, it's got it's got that uh, profile that it's dealing with out there, and one that's trying to form, but still it looks like it wants to go target 48.23. The Dow looks like it wants to go target 37.363, and the Russell 2000 right now is giving us a message that that at least it goes back to the prior swing point high. And that prior swing point high is from November the 8th out there. Now I'm not saying that it begins that right now. Uh, we'd have to go look at the short-term time frame charts and so forth to look at that. But right now, the message of of the Russell pulling back is really just a test of a breakout, a consolidation breakout. And if it holds that level, that is a bullish signal that we see today, even if price closes below the bottom of that daily profile. Back to those profile levels out here, not really much more for me to add to the equation. So uh, what we will do, we're gonna go to a break here in just a few moments. And when we get back to the break, what I'm gonna try to do is get those white charts up on our screen right now. There we go, before we go to this break and share the screen. Here we go. So in the upper left-hand corner, you got the ES Mini. So the ES Mini actually has two topping patterns now. It has a TD9 count top and it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So not until the high of, um, I got to go back and figure out which high is the highest high. I believe it was from uh, that bar number eight. That is uh, around November, November the 10th. Is that what it is? No, November the 5th. I, I say we're, we're going to heartbreak. Steve Rhodes, we'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, 
is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the four daily time frame charts for the equity future contract. And uh, you can see that the ES mini, as I said before we go into break, two different topping signals that are out there, patterns that are out there, a TD9 count. And yesterday we had a, a nice little dark cloud cover candle that confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. The NQ has done something similar to the ES. It spiked higher above that TD9 count. So we, today's close, very important. Again, that level to be watching to negate that pattern, the TD9 count that is. 164850. If you get a close above that, it negates the signal. But you can see it's also triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And therefore, if we were to see a bearish reversal candle form, not necessarily today, but if we were to see a bearish reversal candle form, that would confirm a top. So it could negate the TD nine count pattern. But then tomorrow, for example, you could get a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Just saying that's what could happen out here. And again, if price does not close above that TD9 count top, then that pattern, that topping signal remains in place, just as the ones for the Dow and the Russell 2000 remain in place. So we've got uh, three of four have topping signals. The fourth one, the NQ, it has one, but we're uncertain as to whether it's going to take that out come day's end. We talked about the Russell 2000, how that pullback is really just a test of the breakout area of the consolidation pattern. If price were to get back into the consolidation, that could signal move back into maybe the 2238 level, the TD9 breakout area. If, for example, the Dow, the YM, if we were to close below 35,759, that would be the bottom of its daily profile. Then that would signal to you and I that price should make run for 35,388. So that's what's going on there. So we know that the NQ is the lead dog out here. We know that the markets are not going to top unless the NQ tops out here. I mean, in any kind of significant way. Of course, we also know that we have to watch the spot volatility index, which is trading still below its 50-day exponential moving average. In fact, during the day, that level was tested and rejected.
rejected. Now, I'm not showing that on these charts right here, but that level is 1755. That's the number for the spot volatility index that price must close above to then say that the ES Mini and the S&P would have some downside traction. We're not there just yet. But since it's the NQ, that is the lead dog out here. Let's go take a look at the NQ charts, our multi time frame charts. At least that's where we should begin. So that's where we're going to begin. Again, we're looking for some type of signals out here. In other words, we know we're up at a resistance area, the TD9 count top. What's going on in the short term time frame charts? Do we have any kind of topping signals? Well, I don't really have one inside of the 30 minute chart. I suppose I could draw an A to B equals CD. Price would need to get below that oscillator and change line at 16,426 to have any kind of significant meaning. The NQ, uh, does not have a topping signal. What we do know is there was a push earlier this morning that was nothing more than a test and rejection of its breakout area. The 120 minute chart is forming bar number eight of a TD9 count, but that won't complete that pattern that is until four o'clock today. Uh, no topping signal on the 240, no topping signal on the five hour chart. So how do we summarize this? <clears throat> we don't have a lot of intraday topping signals. And so we could easily see the NQ close above that TD9 count top, and that would be bullish. So what else should we look at? Great question. I think what else we should look at, is that even decent grammar? Not really. Uh, let me see if I have this open. I probably didn't open it. God dang it. What were you, you were sleeping at the switch, Steve. Oh, I, can't, I don't want to do it now. So I'm gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. What do you mean? So let me change screens here. And the screen, I like to be able to look at that multi time frame uh, setup out there, but if I started now, you know, anyway, something could crash. We're not going to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is we're just going to look at the daily time frame. So these would probably be the easiest to populate. Mm, maybe it's this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the top eight holdings inside of the uh, inside of the NQ or the NASDAQ 100. So let's begin with number one, that is Apple. AAPL is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go see what its daily time frame is signaling to you and I. Well, one thing we know is that Apple is, looks like it's gonna close above its TD9 breakdown resistance level 155.48. So that is a bullish signal. Um, and it could be forming an A to B equals CD tip. So we'll go look at my black background chart, see what the volume is in here. Price is also taken on a key resistance level. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That was from back on September 7th. And if price Apple, that is, can close above 157.26, you're at 157.42 right now. A close above 157.26 will be a breakout pattern. Let's go take a look at that A to B equals CD. We're gonna just simply change the charts that we're looking at. We'll go to our three panel charts out here. And um, and this is really for everybody that's thinking maybe short or maybe after this, they might be thinking they maybe not short. So let's take a look at Apple on a daily basis. So we know the resistance level, it's traded above right now. Again, just to remind you that is at 157.26. Volume wise, the B point of an A to B equals CD to the upside in Apple has 100 million shares. That was October 28th. Geez, you're at 82 million shares right now. Apple's got the mojo. And Apple has a weighting of uh, 10, 11%, 10.99 to be exact. We don't need to be exact out here. What's the A to B equals CD telling us? And again, this, this, will, this will be in play. Stevie says it'll be in play as long as price today closes above the high of 157.26. We're trading above that right now. So one to one out here would get you to 161.31. Odds favor, that would not be the target. Why? The retracement of this pattern was only a 45% retracement. That's typically enough of a retracement to take you beyond the one to one level. So I'd say that Apple is very likely targeting 161 to 165 with the caveat being that price must take out resistance. That is the this, this September 7th swing point. And that swing point is at 157.26. Now I know somebody out there is saying, hey, Steve-O, why did you only draw in the small A to B equals CD? It's just because I took the more conservative approach. Do you want me to type in the larger A to B equals CD pattern? Now, as you can see here, folks, I'm just having a conversation with myself, which that alone should say crazy. But if we were taking a look at the large one, what I think what I would do is I would go take a look at the weekly time frame chart. So on the weekly time frame chart, just because it smooths things out. So on the weekly time frame chart, for me at least, it smooths things out. The A point that I would start with for the larger A to B equals CD pattern would start down here on the trading session that began the week of March 8th. Then for our B point, I'm gonna use that high out here from September the 6th, and the C point's gonna be the low on October the 4th. Now that 
would give us a one to one price projection of 179. What Apple would need to do is it would need to close above that 157.26 level with more than 354 million shares. Well, we're at 290 right now. What does Apple do on a typical day? We're not gonna say today is typical, but what did it do yesterday? 88 million shares the day before, 59 million shares. So what Apple is doing on a weekly basis, it appears it's taking out its B point of an A to B equals CD to the upside with volume. Of course, we won't know this until the end of trading tomorrow. So we're gonna start the show tomorrow between eight and nine. At 4 p.m., if Apple is above 157.26 and you're short the NQs out there, I would have to say, ouch, because Apple is saying it wants to move higher. Let's not stop there. Well, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go take a look at Microsoft next, MSFT. That is the number two holding. That represents basically 10%. Really, it's 9.96%, and that was as of last night's close. So MSFT, uh, just curious if this has passed any swing points, and if so, has it done so with volume? It has, on, well, here on a weekly basis, 135 million was taken out with 159, so yeah. So if we take a look at Microsoft, we can see it's above the top of its daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. Let's look at our other charts out here, see what other signals Microsoft communicates to you and I. Price right now is taking out its TD9 count. Oh, it already did. It does not have a topping signal in place. So Microsoft wants to continue to move higher, at least that's what the daily time frame. So the top two holdings inside the NDX 100, right now as of 126 in the afternoon, they're screaming, I want higher price, Stevo. And so that's what they're gonna get. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, continue to motor through uh, some of these holdings, the top 10 holdings, top eight holdings inside the inside the NQ and NASDAQ 100. So we look at Apple and Microsoft. Both of those are screaming they want higher price. In the case of Apple, we need the end of day close. We're now we're to number three, Amazon, uh, nearly 8%, 7.82. Price right now is trying to take out its bearish structured weekly profile. Price is above the top of its daily profile. And uh, price is also above the top of its monthly profile. Now the monthly chart shows the consolidation pattern that Amazon has been in. And so if uh, price is, if this is a breakout, uh, what Amazon is signaling to you and I is that it wants to move into the 42.23 level, currently trading at 36.68. Now, uh, Amazon is moving into its weekly swing point with similar volume. I'm referring to the swing point that uh, began on July 12th. 16, about 17 million shares. You're already at 13, uh, 12 million today. Um, so it's going to be close. Average volume is typically in the 3 million range out there. Whether it takes out that swing point with volume or not, you do have what looks like a consolidation breakup that is underway inside of Amazon. What we don't have here, well, I say that to you, but how do we know unless Stevie checks it out? So we're going to go check it out. I was about to say, we don't have a topping pattern, but let's just make sure of that. So on the daily time frame, um, yeah, that's that's a, that's for sure. No topping signal here. Weekly time frame, no topping signal. Monthly time frame, you know, it still has that bearish shooting star, roads momentum indicator signal. But right now, if price can close above 35.94 this month, it's only the 18th out there, so we have a little bit of time to go. Uh, that would say it's running back to its highs. At this stage here, it looks like it's running back to its highs. So that's Amazon. So we're three for three saying short. Mm, I don't think so. Not at 132 in the afternoon. Maybe at 332, it's a different message. But at 132, that is not the message. So the next uh, holding, uh, well, sort of the next holding is Tesla. But eventually we're going to get to Google, which is broken down into uh, two instruments out there, which really represents about 7%, which really would be the next one. But Tesla is about 4.5%. So let's put up Tesla, TSLA. And the question is, uh, what's Tesla doing? Does it have a top, a bottom, consolidating? What is it doing? Well, it's uh, got a brand new daily profile that formed today. The bottom of this new profile is above the prior bottom. The high is above the prior high, says it likes its bullish trend. Price right now is trying to take out the resistance level of its weekly profile, which is at 876. Well, shoot, it's already done that. Forget about that. It, it, uh, it formed a new weekly profile below price. That is a bullish message. Well, let's pull over the Tesla chart. So this is suggesting to you and I, price should make a move up to the 1131 area. Let's look at that daily time frame chart, see what it says to us. Well, on a daily basis for Tesla, what do we have? Right now, we just have a consolidation with inside its old profile, the new profile that's forming. So it's got resistance at about the 1131 level, but there's nothing bearish here. There's nothing bearish about Tesla. Price will pull back as we saw a few days ago, and all it did was test and support the bottom of that daily profile. New profile forming here, it's above the prior profile. Tesla is not a bearish looking pattern out here. Let's go to Google now. So Google represents about, what did I say, about 8%, 7% between the two instruments. We're just gonna go take a look at G-O-O-G. -O -O and as we take a look at it, uh, this is traded by the top of its daily profile. It's above the weekly profile. It's above the monthly profile out here. What Google is doing is taking on a swing point from the daily time frame that had volume of 919,000 shares. You're at 574. So a little bit light in the loafers if we just do a straight line accounting method. But nonetheless, you close above the top of that profile at 30, 20, 69. That's a bullish signal, especially if you get two consecutive closes. That means tomorrow's close as well. So Google right now is not looking bearish to me. The question is, is Google generating any kind of topping signal as it takes out that prior swing point? And the answer to that question is no. You're going to be in bar number five of a TD9 count on the daily time frame. The weekly chart looks good. Uh, it does have wave number seven, but that can extend itself until we get in. On the monthly chart, you are in Google going to form or looks like you will form bar number nine. But it can be the bar following nine that sets that. So it may be next month versus this month that we see a top. And, and on a monthly basis, what you'd want to see because of that TD9 count, you want to see some type of topping signal on the daily. And I think we just covered that. We don't have that. So now we're at about 10, 20, 28, uh, 32, and 7. We're at 41% of the instruments for the NDX 100 just by covering basically five symbols. And each of them are suggesting to you and I that price wants to continue to move higher. Do we need to go on? Should we continue going on? Let's go on. Let's take a look at uh, Facebook <clears throat> or whatever they call their name, Meta, Meta Universe. Um, 
I'm not a big Facebooker, never have been, never will be. But that doesn't really matter. We want to know what is Facebook doing? Well, Facebook is just testing support today. A new profile that formed above the prior profile tells us about the trend of the upside that is still out there. So just testing support at the 336.77 level. Now, it doesn't look as bullish as the other stocks that we looked at. But let's go take a look at Facebook and see what it's communicating to you and I for its daily, weekly, and its monthly time frame. Well, what did Facebook do? Facebook formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom, did it with a bull sash and a key reversal session. Um, price found resistance at 355.15, backed off to test support. So Facebook looks good. Now, what Facebook needs to do to get into its all out bullish mode would be a close of up 355.15, not today, but at some point in time. And at that stage, what that could be setting up would be an A to B equals CD to the upside. So now we just added another instrument that's about 4%. You kind of get the message out here. NVIDIA, NVIDIA, let's, because I know that Eddie uh, in uh, Boca is big holder of NVIDIA and it probably wants to know what's going on here. So in the case of NVIDIA, what it needs to do to get its uh, bullish legs in order here is close above its TD9 count top. And Eddie, that's the high from November the 9th. And that high is 323.10. We're at 315 right now. So its TD9 count remains in place out here. Price right now is testing the top of its daily profile. In other words, it's trying to break out, but not until it closes above the uh, TD9 count uh, top. And again, that level was 323.10. Will we say that NVIDIA is on its merry way to higher price? It may be on its merry way, but right now it's dealing with that resistance level. On a weekly basis, no topping signal in place for NVIDIA. And on a monthly basis, as we populate this, no top. Well, I take that back. On a monthly basis, this will become bar number eight, but it needs bar number nine to complete out there. So maybe it forms a top this month, next month, or the month after. Well, gee, Steve-O, could you be maybe a little more specific than that? When it comes to the monthly chart, I can't be more specific than that. That's really the signal. But the daily time frame is one that Eddie's going to watch. So this is the first chart inside of the NDX 100. NVIDIA represents 3.7%. It still is bullish uh, or neutral, really. We'd say neutral out here. But let's go take a look at the volume behind the move. So it did gap up. Again, taking on that resistance level. So what is NVIDIA doing from a volume standpoint today? Let's go find out. NVDA and the swing point, that TD9 count top had volume of 63 million shares. You're already at 60 million shares. Oops, 64 million. You're already at 60. So a close. So what you want to watch for really tomorrow, I would say, would be a close above that high of 323.10. Uh, so that covers really the NDX 100. How would you summarize it? What did the charts communicate to you and I? I think what they communicated to you and I is uh, if, uh, in fact, uh, the NQ today closed above 16,448.50, you can expect or we should expect, we should anticipate higher price inside of the NQ. So we get back to this breakout here. We do have a couple of questions that have come in, only two, three now that I see so far. So we'll get to those. And, uh, of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. And you can do that by sending me an email, steve at tfnn.com, or preferably, we do have call-ahead seating. And the way you get that is you dial 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paper Bytes investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our first question coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And we've spent a little bit of time here on the NDX 100. His question is about the uh, Qs, and he's asking about an A to B equals CD, uh, you know, on the daily and weekly. Hector, I prefer just simply to use the weekly A to B equals CD pattern that's out here. It's the one that is most logical to me, and that gives us a price. And by the way, the B point has been taken out with volume already. The B point was uh, 382.78. That was a trading week of September 6th, 126 million. That was taken out with 200 million shares. So you have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on a weekly basis for the QQQ series ETF. And that gives us a price projection, an initial price projection of 435. And when we take that and we go back, and that makes sense, right? It makes sense, why? Because if we go back and we look at the consolidation measured move breakout, which the Qs have already done that, it's got a price projection up in the 16,928 area. So all this is really tying uh, together with itself, and I hope that that helps you out. Uh, and yeah, it is powerful if I go back here and take a look at it uh, because price is along the left side. But the retracement there, Hector, that only that 38% retracement suggests that a more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside is its price objective. So let's say it's between 435, 458 and 488 as to uh, its move. That is the QQQ series ETF. Hector and Patty, thanks so much for listening as well as uh, writing in. The next question, well, how about that? And I didn't see this before I'd mentioned that, which was, uh, this is from Eddie, who wanted to take a look at NVIDIA. But that's not the only thing he wants to look at. So we already covered NVIDIA for Eddie out there. But Eddie's question goes like this. In your opinion, uh-oh, that's dangerous. See, what's nice about the stock charts here, and when I do take a look at the patterns, I'm not giving you my opinion. We're just using technical indicators. All I'm doing is narrating the chart. We're looking for support and resistance using the TAS market profiles. That's one level of support and resistance. We look at our TD9 counts out there and, uh, and, and just the tools that uh, you and I are looking at, our, our, uh, our A to B equals CD patterns. So just a few handful of tools that can help assist us to identify what the markets are communicating to us, realizing that in the very next moment, everything that I just said, we might have to retract because the market is the is the final deciding factor. And if it decides to move lower for whatever reason, then we'll come back and we'll retake a look at things. That's what we do as technicians. We don't get married to an idea. We get married to the idea that there's new information that's gonna be presented to us. And then we take a look at new patterns. Whew, that was a mouthful, but that's not what Eddie was asking about. I know you're saying, Steve-O, would you finally get to his question? It goes like this. 
How do macro events, such as the decision by Biden as to whether Powell will remain as the Fed chairman versus Brainard affect the TD9 counts? Well, it won't affect the TD9 counts at all. That's just done by daily movement of price, where we take a look at each bar, we compare it to the price action of the bar four bars early for whatever time frame it is we use. So that'll have no uh, impact. So answered that question. Are there any clues that your methods give an anticipation of such event? You mean such an event such as uh, uh, the replacement of, uh, of the Fed? Not, nothing that I know of out there. If you're to ask me the question, does it matter? No, not at all. I don't think that it matters. I, the, the, the Fed is the Fed. It's, you know, I, I, no, I don't see it really mattering out here with regard to uh, with regard to whether it's Powell or whether it's regard to Brainerd out here or anybody else. How independent do you really think this Fed is? You know, in any in, in, in I'm not going to get into that because you didn't ask me that question, uh, thankfully. Uh, but I don't think that it, one number one, Eddie, it's not going to impact our TD9 counts. It has nothing to do with that. And uh, do I think it's really going to have, do I have any kind of signal as to whether that's going to happen or not? I don't. Um, do I think it's going to change the overall impact of the markets? No, I don't. Uh, do I think if uh, they raise uh, interest rates that that's going to create the market? No, I don't. Why don't they? Well, because we're in a point here, we go back through other points in time in history, Eddie, where interest rates have rose and uh, also the stock market has risen. Why is that? Well, because when people lose confidence in their government, which in essence is something we can just simply see through the polls out there. Uh, and it's not just our government, it's governments around the globe out here. Uh, people are gonna say, hey, I don't trust my money with the governments, I trust them with individual companies. We just took a look at the NQ, the NDX 100. You can see a whole ton of information that people are piling into that, at least at this stage of the game. So um, at this stage, your rise in interest rates, quite frankly, is not going to crater the market because people have more confidence in private businesses than we do inside of uh, government. So that's Stevie's spiel out there, and we'll just end it there. But thanks so much for the question. We've got another question out here. This comes in from Marty. Uh, Marty writes in, he says, I'm looking for a bargain in gold stocks out there. Uh-oh. Well, the only person who's going to tell us about a bargain in gold stocks would be Tom O'Brien. But we'll see what we can do here. You said the CEO bought some shares at 74 cents recently. So VGZ, let's go take a look at uh, VGZ. Let's get that up on our screens for us. That is uh, Vista Gold. Okay. And uh, what do the charts say long and short term? So what we know about Vista Gold is that its support area, interestingly enough that you put down 74 cents, uh, Marty, because the support level is 74 cents. So apparently the CEO is using the TAS market profiles and is looking at that daily time frame out there. So 74 cents, that would be a potential buy area. You know, what I see here in Vista Gold, and you see it too, you see a series of higher lows. So that's a bullish signal. Uh, I see a completed weekly A to B equals CD pattern. Oh, no, I take that back. That's not a correct pattern. That was an old one that was drawn in there. So that's not the pattern that we're looking at. Let's pull over the Vista Gold charts out here. See if we can find any other signals on the daily, weekly, or monthly time frame for Marty. So on the daily time frame, well, we can see a breakout level is at 71 cents. So if you're asking for a buy area, it's like right now, it's between 71 and 74. We're trading at 76. Let's not argue over two pennies. But look, you've got resistance at 84 cents. If price can close above 84 cents, then you've got a change in trend out there. But you're looking for a bargain. Um, you know, you've got a consolidation in essence going on. With, you're at support. So it says, okay, go ahead and fire away. Wave number seven on the monthly time frame. That's a bottom signal. Price is trading above its oscillator and change line. That suggests to move to 78 cents. The monthly time frame out here, I don't have anything much. Not much really to share with you there. So Marty. Uh, if you're looking, uh, it can, is it a bargain? It's a bargain as long as support holds. That would be 71 cents. So go ahead, fire away, do the normal position sizing. Uh, but uh, if it closes below 71 cents, you've got to anticipate that it's headed lower. Now, that lower could be just to the swing point low from September 28th. And that number there is 67 cents. But maybe it takes that out. And, you know, I'd say if it takes out the first level of support, you know, just be gone from it. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out, uh, Marty. Thanks so much for writing in. Nancy writes in, and Nancy says, oh, just thanks for the uh, Apple analysis. Well, you're welcome. You were going to write 
in and request what I already did. Very helpful. Well, perfect. Nancy, as always, glad to help you out. So we've taken care of all the requests. I don't think there's anything inside the den that I've seen. Or if I have overlooked something, please go ahead and type that in. But we're only going to have about two minutes before we go to this uh, breakout here shortly. So what do we want to take a look at next? Hmm. What do we want to take a look at next that uh, of anything of significance out here? Oh, I still have a, how good is your system? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Oh, Saba. As long as Dan, I saw, I've, so Dan in uh, Boston, Dan from Boston, S-A-V-A. And this is near a potential buy point, I think. That is Cassaba Sciences. So price is just hanging out at, the, at support. And that is the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 47.96. It's the bottom of the weekly profile, 45.11. But has this made a bottom? It sure is at support. There's no question about that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in st petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First mortgage? The Tiger First mortgage program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First mortgage program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's take a look at Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals. The ticker symbol here is ARWR. And this week it got down to a low of 63.37. Now, if we didn't have the weekly chart, 
Um, we were only looking at the daily time frame chart as we saw this thing just totally fall out of bed. Some nice wide ranging bars to the downside. We we wouldn't really understand why it bottomed where it did. Now we could come back and take a look at the uh, swing point of the breakout area on the daily time frame from October 29th and, uh, and November the 1st out there, which had volume of 755 million shares. And that was tested with 752 uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago. And then yesterday was a little bit lighter volume 490,000 shares. So, okay, I get that. But really, it's the support level of the weekly profile, bullish structured weekly profile. That's more important. So, if you're going to ask me where is price headed to, well, at 7409, it's the bottom of the daily profile, and 7346 is the top of the weekly profile. So, that is likely where price is headed to. A close above. Uh, those levels would suggest higher price. Higher price would be 80.53, 84.83. If we take a look at my white background charts, I don't know that there's any additional useful information. Well, 72.76 uh, is going to be the next resistance level. That's the green oscillator and change line, but there's battles ahead. 74.09, 80.53, 84.83, but the key battle here is really 72.57 and 74.09. So I would say the key battles. The weekly time frame chart uh, not providing us with any additional information. The monthly, not much either. Intraday, <clears throat> intraday looks pretty good and signals this wants to move higher. However, note this, the 30 minute time frame, oscillator and change line changed colors about an hour and a half ago. And that tells us that over the coming sessions, I don't know how many, we should see price net line catch up to each other. So on an intraday basis, if you see price test and reject, that green oscillator and change line, that would be a bullish message. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned because you've got your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next with the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home from 3 to 4. And I'll be back with you tomorrow morning early, bright and early, 8 to 9 a.m. Please join me then. Otherwise, have a terrific Thursday, and we'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care, folks.